Today, I'm gonna to show you a way to magically clean up your backgrounds in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nates, and you can find me on the all new redesignflurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is gonna be super applicable to anyone who's shooting in a studio or a garage and you've got some like seamless backdrop paper. It's a very, very common way to photograph your subject because it puts just like a really clean background in your images. Seamless backdrops are really inexpensive and they're just a great way to make a nice, clean image. The only problem is that it's just a piece of paper and during a photo shoot people are walking around and those pieces of paper they tend to get like torn and wrinkled and footprints and they tend to look really nasty. So we had someone submit a question about how to clean it up. Today's episode is brought to you by Sven who says I recently did my first photo shoot and over time the backdrop got dirty. Now I'm going through the images and I would like to know if there's a really good way to remove all the dirt and make it look clean again and you are in luck, Sven. There is a really good way, and that's what today's episode is all about. So our image today is by Sven. It's really well done, a nice and simple portrait of someone playing a guitar in a studio. And you can see right here in the backdrop, this all looks really clean because this is it's not on the ground. No one's gonna be stepping on it. But as we scroll down here, we start to see what Sven is talking about. There's all these little areas with like scratches and dirt and just all this nasty stuff on the backdrop that it really does take away a lot from an image. And if you guys have ever shot on a white seamless backdrop, you're like, yep, I see this all the time. So I did a ton of research, tried a whole different type of methods and figured out there's one really amazing way that actually completely takes care of this and it's super quick to do. So all we have to do, I'm gonna just duplicate our background layer. So I really never like to work on a background layer because we're gonna be using layer masks and I always wanna be able to go back to the original if I need to. So we're gonna hit Command J to duplicate our background layer. Let's just zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. Okay, now you might be thinking like, okay, clone stamp tool or healing brush tool or patch tool or you know things like that. And I tried all that, but there's actually a tool and it's kind of hidden. It's here under the filter dialog. So if you go to filter and then down here to noise, we're gonna go over here to median. So filter, noise, and median. And basically what this does is it chooses all these areas where it's like, has a little bit of texture and things like that and blends those together. So we're gonna go to filter, noise, and then median. Okay, now it's a super simple dialog to use. All you have is a radius slider. So as you bring your radius up, it includes more in your median. And you can see this is on skin and things like that, this is not really gonna work that well unless you wanna do like super skin smoothing. But as I keep pretty pressing the up button, you can see my background is actually cleaning up really, really nicely. Now the nice thing about median as well is it's it's keeping all of our edges intact. So you can see the edge right here, you know, for your subject and things like that. All those edges are really nice intact. So it's not going to start blurring. This is much different from something like a Gaussian blur, which would blend or like blur the black from the couch into the white on the background. All this stuff would blur. Again, this is not something you're gonna use to like retouch. Obviously, if we scroll up here, like this is totally not usable of the subject. But of our background, you can see it's really doing a nice job cleaning that up. So we're gonna hit okay. And the amount of radius that you're gonna choose for each photo is going to change, but it's going to, um, you'll just push that slider until you start to see basically everything gone away, but don't go too far to where it starts to really dramatically alter your image. So let's just turn this off and on. And you can see the reason I like this median is because it gets rid of all those little details, but it keeps the shadow detail. Look at the edges and detail there in the shadow. It's really nice and it's actually, it's hard to do that. Like if you were trying to do that with a clone stamp tool or a healing brush tool, you'd have a lot of difficulties. So this is an amazing filter. Obviously it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect in Photoshop, especially not the first go around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a layer mask on this, okay? And then we're gonna hit Command I on the layer mask and that's gonna invert our layer mask. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab my brush tool and we're gonna paint white at 100% on our layer mask, just where our backdrop is. And you don't have to be incredibly precise with this because it actually does do a pretty good job. The filter does a pretty good job at stopping where it sees the edges of our shadows and the edges of our furniture and things like that. All right, so I'm just painting white on the backdrop. 
Now, most of the time, you're going to be using filters in Photoshop. They're not going to just going to work perfectly the first go round. So when I do this stuff, I'm always keeping in mind like, OK, step one is use the median. And then after that, I'm probably going to go in here and have to use like a healing brush tool or a clone stamp tool or something like that. But this is going to get us most of the way. So just painting this in, you can see like here, that little edge there, that that didn't quite work, right? Because the median filter decided to blend that in in a really weird way. So I'm just going to paint black right there. That's why it's important to use your layer masks and to do this on a new layer, which is a duplicate of your background layer, because you can mask out areas where the filter didn't quite do exactly what you wanted it to do. All right. But I like this. Look, I can go like I'm painting over top of her leg a little bit. Like This is what my layer mask looks like. It's right over top of her leg. But all this filter is going to do, for the most part, is just going to smooth out her leg, because that's what it does. And it's going to stop wherever it hits our, uh, basically, wherever it hits an edge. All right. Cool. You might have noticed it did some, like, the, the heel there. You might have noticed, like, it actually did some kind of weird stuff with areas, like, sh with sharp corners. So definitely keep in mind that when you're masking this in, like stay a little bit farther away from those sharp corners because it, it tend to just round those out. And I'm, I'm not sure 100% why, just however this filter is built, that's just like, you know, <laughs> a side effect of how the filter is built. All right, there we go. So we're painting this in. And this is, again, if you're photographing someone and they're, you know, in the woods and they've got all these like detail and stuff like that in the backdrop. This is not going to work, guys. This is for when you're photographing people in the studio and they're on like a plain white or a plain gray backdrop. But it's going to save you a ton, a ton of time cleaning up the background because it really does pretty much all of the work for you and it looks great. All right, let's just zoom in so we can kind of see the before and the after with this. So there's our before and our after. All right, now we're almost done. I would say like this actually pretty much did get rid of our problem. But there's a couple more things that I'm going to do. And it's super simple. We're just going to grab our brush tool. So new layer, B for the brush tool. And I'm just going to paint with a soft edge brush, sampling colors from my backdrop. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more. So we're going to sample this color here. And I'm going to paint with a flow of 10. So you can hit Shift 1 to change your flow of your brush down to 10%. So I'm just going to sample this color and just kind of paint that in there. Because I'm, I'm just kind of saying that you know I, I want my colors to be a little bit more consistent. And I don't necessarily want the shadow from the ottoman to go off of the screen there. All right, and lighten this area up a little bit. So this is just a brush tool, just a nice way to ensure that we've got the same color all the way edge to edge. All right, and I'm just making sure to not cover up my subject. So turning that off and on. We just don't want to hit the subject. All right, there we go. Let's group those together and let's look at our before and our after. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Super simple, but if you guys are shooting on backdrops, this should help save you a ton of time and clean up those backdrops without having to spend an hour going in with a clone stamp tool and a healing brush tool. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can just click right down below the subscribe button we receive we don't receive. We send out episodes like this a couple of times a week teaching Photoshop and photography for free. And if you have an idea for an episode, please leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And share Flurn with all of your friends, every single person you know. There's a Flurn share button right here on YouTube and you can just hit it and then they'll get it and it'll all be good. Thanks again guys and I'll Flurn you later. Bye everyone. My name is Nice. Oh. Ah. Ah. I don't know. Uh, that was almost good. All right, guys. <laughs> that was weird.